The Fat of the Land Quote, An abundance of wheat, wine, the dew of heaven, and the fat of the land. The Story of Weston A. Price This humble dentist, concerned by the growing number of cavities in his practice, traveled around the world to find an answer. He was determined to find a solution because his own son died from an infected root canal that he performed. What great sadness! In his travels around the world in the years 1930 to 1940, he studied many of the primitive cultures and traditional societies, Celts, Gaelic, Hebrides, Islanders, isolated Swiss villages, Native Americans, Eskimos, Aborigines, African tribes, and Polynesian cultures. Those who lived far from the modern, industrialized man's diet had teeth in excellent condition, the teeth being a reflection of overall health in the body. Native Americans saw tooth decay as a curse, a going against nature. A growing number of lucid dentists and doctors have established the connection between the problems of teeth, such as cavities, root canals, amalgam fillings, and the proliferation of bacteria of the family Staphylococcus aureus. These bacteria use the root canals or improperly pulled teeth, which leave behind nerve endings, as incubators, and then travel down bacterial circuits. They hide themselves in low oxygen zones to better proliferate throughout the body in ipsilateral fashion, which is to say, on the same side of the infected yet non-detected tooth, going down to the hips, the heart, and to the kidneys primarily. These bacterial circuits drain vital energy from the body and the immune system until one day it gives in. Many autoimmune glandular and neuromuscular disease syndromes often have this undetected reality as prime etiology. There may also be cell wall deficient polymorph L form bacteria mixed into these colonies, which the body may not be able to properly identify and remove due to the cell wall itself being destroyed by toxins, antibiotics, heavy metals, or the like. A world filled with toxins without proper boundaries and open borders finds its metaphor in these cell wall deficient bacteria and the body's weakening defense, or one could say, its loss of selective permeability. It's an eye-opener. This work can be found with the heading Focal Infection Theory and Cell Wall Deficient Bacteria. According to Weston Price, cavities and crooked teeth are the first sign of the degeneration of the species. The two most significant revelations he encountered after comparing the indigenous diets with the modern diets of his time were that these peoples consumed an average of 10 times more fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, found in fat, that the absorption of water-soluble vitamins, B and C, and minerals were dependent on the amount of fat-soluble vitamins consumed. Weston Price labeled fat-soluble vitamins activators. These two findings are in stark contrast to the propaganda no-fat, low-fat, and saturated fat is unhealthy in which we have been conditioned. What is the purpose for such cultural conditioning? Was it put together by the industry for a reason? There is a big difference between modern studies on the adverse effects of fat and our classic textbooks of anatomy. Our pure anatomy texts speak of the composition of cell membranes which are composed of 50% fat saturated fat, phospholipids. Our brain is composed of more than 50% saturated fat. In addition, the liver and heart have as their primary energy source saturated fat contained within them that they use when solicited by stress. These lipids play an anti-inflammatory role by strengthening the integrity of the membrane structure. The myelin sheath that lines the nervous system is composed of saturated fat along with the white blood cells and the entire lymphatic system as well. Dear Cholesterol, I love you. Calcium absorption is not possible without cholesterol, the latter being made from fat in the liver. 
brain and within the cells themselves. Cholesterol protects us from oxidation within the body, especially the veins. It is an antioxidant and a fundamental repairman. The level of cholesterol increases with age because we oxidize with age. It is the principal protector of the brain, the latter being composed of almost 50% cholesterol. Children have a hard time making it, and it is essential that they get their cholesterol from their food. Cholesterol is also the precursor of the steroid hormones, estrogen, testosterone, and cortisone. I do not sor cite sources because these functions are the basic functions of cholesterol and are found in the ana anatomical and scientific literature. You will not find the word good nor bad in the classic textbooks, but only their roles and functions as biological agents of the body. When I speak of fats, it is in reference to traditional fats only. Unrefined palm oil, red in color, raw milk products, unrefined quality lard, moulard duck fat, virgin coconut oil, yellow butter, extra virgin olive oil, unfiltered, and unrefined animal fat. And in small quantities, sesame oil, walnut oil, cold flaxseed oil, cold wheat germ oil, unrefined emu oil, etc. But by no means modern fats, such as non-traditional vegetable oils, trans fats, hydrogenated fats, overheated or refined oils. Here are some of the weaker points of the structure that holds these anti-cholesterol ideas in place. First, who stands to gain? What replaces our tr traditional fats? It is often oils produced from monoculture crops that have been imported by large multinational corporations soybean, rapeseed, corn oil, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, etc. Many studies which denounce cholesterol get their data from laboratory experience, experiments in which rats are fed mega doses of oxidized cholesterol powder, atomized milk proteins. It is harmful allergenic and does not exist in nature. And it's not the one we find on our plates. Without cholesterol, we would not be able to eliminate toxins. We know that toxins are lipophilic, meaning they are attracted to lipids such as cholesterol. The toxins are then discharged with the bile. Without a significant amount of cholesterol in the diet, our internal reserves of cholesterol would be quickly depleted and toxins would dangerously remain inside, causing disease and other complications down the road. Disease has two main sources, nutritional deficiencies and detoxification pathway problems, often both in conjunction. Cancer, for example, is a strategy that the body uses to isolate the toxins in tumors that cannot get expelled normally. Cholesterol in foods that contain natural fats, especially, especially raw fats like raw butter, are essential to the exodus of toxins. For a personal experiment, put a healthy amount of butter in a frying pan and proceed to scramble an egg white. Watch how the fat is not absorbed. Add the egg yolk and scramble it. Scramble it with the grease and you will see it all of it absorbed. Cholesterol absorbs fats. The preferred fuel for the body comes from fats, not sugar. We can store only 500 grams of sugar in our body as glycogen, while someone even skinny could store at least 9 kilograms of fat for energy use. Part of the fat is converted into glycerol, and a high percentage is used up through beta oxidation, which leaves little to eat for the sugar loving opportunists, cancer cells, yeasts, and parasites. More than the sugar itself, these invaders like the environment and ionic mineral loss acidity that the sugar creates. In addition, all our precious organs are lipophilic and rebuild themselves daily from saturated fats which they contain in their interior. We would be wise to re educate the body to return to its natural state as it was for centuries. This will take time, perhaps 3 to 12 months minimum, to get fat adapted. Which basically means that you can double or triple fat intake, cut carbs in half, and feel stable energy without a need for stimulants, yet with high activity or output. The energy levels in the body will be stable and calm. The body is a bit spoiled and will resist at first by trying to get more sugar, carbs, or stimulants, but will progressively strengthen on a nutrient-dense diet. See the chapter, Nutrition as Remedy. It's a new way of living. The link between internal cholesterol levels and heart disease exists in the medical literature, but the link between external cholesterol, as in food, and heart disease does not. 
except for in motivated studies which employ oxidized cholesterol in powder form as mentioned above. It is an accepted fact that we consume only 20 to 30 percent of our daily needs of cholesterol. The rest is manufactured by the body itself. Experiments done with natural sources of cholesterol, butter, eggs, offal, fat, often show the opposite of what one would expect. In a famous study, it was found that those who ate the most cholesterol in their diet manufactured the least internally. Of course, we are speaking of cholesterol from animals and their byproducts which have been raised and fed naturally. Animals fed with hormones, even natural food-grade hormones for artificial bulking and fattening, and animals fed with antibiotics should be avoided. Studies such as the French Paradox and the Mediterranean Diet taken from the work of Ansel Keys have been cherry-picked to support his ideas on cholesterol, his life's work. But up close, they proved to be incorrect. The French Paradox Diet was studied in Gascony, a region known for its foie gras, duck fat, pork, and cheese. These foods act as a layer of protective fat while improving nutrient absorption and facilitating detoxification. Different food textures, such as cheese and fat, help detoxify different toxins from the body by their mechanical aspect as well. Like for a car, the grease moves things along. The fact is that these studies chose not to focus on the saturated fats, but only on the wine and olive oil. Makes one wonder about their objectivity. The data used to study the famous Mediterranean diet, or Cretan diet, was obtained during a period between two wars, a period of uncertainty during which the Greeks ate less rich foods due to scarcity. The long-term effects on health were not studied. This study also minimized the massive quantity of goat products, milk products, feta, and meat when available. Quite an important detail to overlook. The diet for diabetics, before the invention of insulin, was composed of 80% of calories from fat. Most of these were animal fats. This is a historical fact. Curiously, this type of high cholesterol diet even provoked weight loss in, for many diabetics depending on their physical activity. Saturated fats do not solicit insulin. Insulin is the stalker of sugar and fat in the body, and the hypersecretion of insulin is one of the fundamental reasons for obesity in our industrialized culture. Insulin plays an important role in protecting the brain by ensuring that the blood sugar level does not exceed a certain limit. The pharmaceutical industry is aware that to lower cholesterol, one must simply eat cholesterol-rich rich foods. What a paradox. On the other hand, a restriction of dietary cholesterol increases the internal production. Researchers for the statins family of drugs, anti-cholesterol drugs, try to imitate this natural process of the body using synthetic enzymes. In truth, we need only to find the reason why the body feels so attacked that it starts to produce cholesterol to defend itself. Quite often, a certain level of carbohydrates in the diet can cause this phenomenon, or other key deficiencies. Insulin plays a key role here. When the body has is not given a sufficient amount of good quality cholesterol from fats, it begins to manufacture it from carbohydrates, sugars, and stores it in the gallbladder. As if in a panic, it considers this storage a reserve for a possible future shortage. Unfortunately, this panic storage mechanism can result in gallstones. In conclusion, the current ideas floating around about cholesterol are not consistent with the physiology of the human body. We will make a brief aside in this chapter about fat for diabetics, hypoglycemics, and those suffering from fungal infections and fungi such as Candida albicans. These people can watch many of their symptoms disappear if they understand a few simple concepts. Stop using stimulants quickly but gradually, which create insulin spikes such as coffee, tea, chocolate, no-fat sweets, etc. Double or triple the intake of fat, especially saturated fats, animal fats, virgin coconut oil, raw butter, raw dairy products, if not allergic, traditional oils, olives, sesame, unrefined palm oil, red palm oil. Reduce the amount of carbohydrates by half. By doubling the quantity of fat intake, reducing carbohydrates, flour, starchy vegetables, grains, fruit, becomes possible without frustration and without hunger. Count a small handful per meal, which is about 30 to 50 grams carbohydrate value. Always eat carbs with ample amounts of fat to avoid su spiking sugar levels. Avoid sweets. Su 
sweeteners, and fruit juices. These foods support the growth of candida. It is helpful to understand that the outgrowth of candida serves a noble purpose. Often it acts as a signal that your blood sugar level is too high. Candida feeds on our excess sugar. It's like a kind of sugar barometer. Thrush-like symptoms and canker sores also point to the same overload of sugar and the concomitant acidity. Note, some cases of pro proliferation of candida albicons happen on a biological terrain which is polluted with heavy metals, toxins, and amalgams. If this is your case, verification through laboratory testing, it would be better to remove the source of the pollution. Removing aluminum or lead mercury amalgam feelings before attending to the candida. Indeed, in some cases, candida can be protecting us from heavy metal poisoning. Incorporate foods that promote glucose tolerance. Cinnamon, gymnema, vanilla, cardamom, anise seed, fennel, or stevia, green powder only. Cinnamon is a good source of chromium. Chromium improves the cellular uptake of circulating sugar. This is one of the folk remedies for diabetes in India. One teaspoon per day, freshly ground and fried in oil. Personally, I cannot ingest cinnamon, especially freshly ground, and I feel it is toxic for the kidneys. I also feel the coumarin in freshly ground black pepper is toxic to the kidneys. But as this may only be a minority opinion, I have left this open for discussion. I also dislike stevia, even the natural form. I prefer raw honey. To be fair, Indians traditionally only use spices in their curries after having heated and fried the spices in oil first. This preparation lessens the possible negative impact of certain spices. This diet helped me to personally solve the riddle of my own unstable energy levels while all other attempts were not working. Fats are gradually assimilated in the digestive tract. They offer us a constant energy over a period of time. If you have difficulty eating fats, you can follow this diet gradually, accompanying it with Swedish bitters or apple cider vinegar, or better yet, aged white balsamic vinegar or vinaigre d'Orléans, which is nothing like standard balsamic, mixed with unheated honey to promote digestion and fat metabolism. Statistically, most of our heart, metabolic, and circulatory diseases have a common denominator, insulin. Cellular resistance to insulin causes an overproduction of insulin. High blood pressure runs on the same principle. If the blood is overloaded with carbohydrates or circulating waste, many diseases can take root in the body. When there is too much sugar in the blood, insulin is secreted to force the sugar into the cells or to store them as fats in the adipose tissue. These insulin spikes will keep the body in a constant state of panic and this will limit the proper functioning of the other th hormones thyroid, adrenal, ovarian, etc. Once the sugars are stored, we're back to the square one with an urge for sugar, carbohydrates, and the cycle continues ad infinitum. If the insulin level is too high for too long, the body will gradually develop cellular resistance. Note, the big belly or spare tire we see on people who are overweight is rightfully titled the Amer in American medical slang as the insulinometer. It reveals the level of resistance to insulin. In addition, excess blood sugar will be deposited directly on the epithelium walls, on the walls of the veins and everywhere the blood flows, leading to dermatitis, eye problems, syndrome X, prediabetes, or, plur or poor blood circulation in general. This is the reason why the body sends the fatty cholesterol antioxidant to smooth over and unstick the sugar residues which damage the veins and arteries. Know that fats are the only category of foods that do not solicit insulin, in contrast to carbohydrates and proteins, and therefore the right quantity of fat per meal is one of the keys to good health. But do not put blind faith in my experiences. Test it out for yourself. Our ancestors were strong, resistant, and they had no fear of traditional fats. The standard answer is usually yes, but they worked hard in the fields all day. This is true. But just because our work today is less laborious does not give us the wisdom needed to change the traditions around. If you have a sedentary lifestyle in front of a computer, then a training program, dance lessons, hot saunas plus cold water, short and high intensity workouts, basketball or long walks through hills or other such message methods will need to be employed. 
how much we eat should correspond also to our level of activity. You can eat a little less in quantity, but keeping the same proportions of fat and carbohydrates as they did in former times. Our ancestors ate fat because they had not lost their common sense. The good fats and cholesterol-rich foods are nourishment for our organs, especially the liver, the heart, and the brain. Fats from traditional foods are essential for detoxification, growth, repair, and for our reproductive system. After all, our ancestors were free of the alarming obesity rates, child obesity, heart attacks, diabetes at all ages, and the myriad of chronic diseases we have today. In a society that avoids and restricts cholesterol from traditional foods, the loss of memory, blood sugar problems, infertility, and cancer gradually become the norm. Cholesterol is needed for the exodus of toxins via the bile. Otherwise, one incurs the possibility of improper disposal pathways leading up to tumor genesis. The rise in cardiac and metabolic diseases directly corresponds to the decrease in our consumption of butter and saturated fat. It also corresponds to the increase in our consumption of sugar and adulterated or refined oils. If we take a look at the old cookbooks, we will see a lot of cream, eggs, butter, tallow, lard, unrefined, liver, duck fat, and pork. Before the 20th century, people did not have problems with widespread obesity or degenerative diseases, nor did their children. Have we gone mad with the industrialization that has arrived on our plates with all the modern studies and propaganda that come with it? We love to say that we live longer than our ancestors, but in what condition is our third age? Did our ancestors have something to teach us? Do we waste foods that could be healing us? The society that wastes the organs of animals to use only pieces of lean meat, throwing out the organs of the iodine-rich heads of the shrimp, the orange, vitamin-rich tongue-like foot of the scallop, the B12 rich tamale and the head of the lobster and the tamale crab fat and row of the crab is a society which is exacerbating our deficiencies. These foods are sacred and rich in vital life force giving nutrients. My brother tried this fresh lobster tamale with me at a respectable seafood restaurant and he felt stronger for weeks after the meal. Refraining from respectfully eating the whole animal is creating its own dilemma. Not eating this simple greenish-blue or black tamale can be a serious error for your body's stamina and vitamin level replenishment. The first thing that carnivores in the wild devour are the organs because they are the most nutritious. Nature reveals something essential to us if we have ears to hear. It is often heard but untrue that the noble organs such as the liver store toxins. We are speaking of the organs and offal from animals raised on high grass, soy-free, glyphosate-free, organic pastures. In truth, the liver stores our reserves of vitamins and eliminates toxins in the bile. Our ancestors had a tradition of eating organ meats once a week. A reminder of the nutritional importance of liver. In a study published by B. H. Urshoff, M.D., it was shown that there is a wealth of vital factors to be found in liver. Dr. Urshoff wanted to experiment his, with his anti-fatigue diet on laboratory rats. The first group was fed a standard diet for rats and synthetic vitamins. The second group was fed the same standard diet and a natural, natural B vitamin B complex, and the third group was fed the same standard diet with an addition of 10% of dry beef liver. Results? The first group swam in a tub for 13 minutes on average before getting tired. The second group swam for 13.5 minutes, and the third group continued to swim beyond the two-hour limit. That's 10 times longer. This study, easy to reproduce, clearly shows that the presence of vitamins in animal liver, A, B, B9, B12, C, D, E, CoQ10, copper, and iron, are not negligible or as easy to replace as some might think. Liver Cream Shake This drink will guarantee an immediate revitalization which will last for 12 to 48 hours and may have weeks long effects on many deficiencies. Blend a slice of raw or frozen liver or kidneys, for kidneys retain one centimeter of fat around the kidney if possible and pre-soak in salt water for a few hours with equal to double its weight in artisan vanilla ice cream. Sweetened, beaten, cooked, and then frozen Devon double cream imported from the UK may also be used. 
Scrape a vanilla pod into the cream. Blend and filter through a stainless steel or copper pasta strainer. The idea seems disgusting, but the fatty cream absorbs the blood and neutralizes the taste. What is most important here is that you will feel a deep serenity and a clear thinking for the rest of the day as well as the next. It is highly beneficial. This mixture can be adapted with less liver and frozen as popsicles or even used in a child's bottle. It calms them. This combination of milk and liver has a traditional antecedent. Good quality cream helps children win the battle against sugar unless they are truly allergic. In this case, try goat or sheep's milk cream. Some make a recipe without cream using liver with a blended Virgin Bloody Mary mix, liver shooters. The first foods that are given to babies by tra the traditional peoples were liver and egg yolk, not cereals and grains. Easy Liver Pate Dice an organic or quality farmer's market large onion or a few small ones and fry it up with butter, chicken, fat, moulard duck fat, or an olive oil and butter mixture. Add diced potato to fry with the onions. When the onions are cooked, add a jar of the best chicken livers you can obtain. Prefer fresh over frozen, but soy-free frozen chicken livers are better than soy-fed fresh livers. Recently frozen farm-to-table livers will taste better than store-bought frozen livers. Imported wine may be added to cook the onions faster. In this case, cook onions and some carrots separately and recombine. Cover, but do not overcook. The liver should be pink on the inside. Add six hard-boiled sliced soy-free eggs if you like. Pour everything into a glass blender or food processor and mix until smooth. Add more celtic salt and whatever non-MSG spice mix you like if needed. Lay out in a small dish. If you do not have a glass blender, then just let the livers cool in the refrigerator before mixing in plastic. You can also smash manually or buy a simple hand-turning food mill device. As a cheat, you can buy onion bits fried in palm oil at most grocery stores. Avoid anything labeled vegetable oil, which is soy oil. Layer the onions on top along with the diced hard-boiled eggs and some diced parsley. Serve with spelt, matzo, or imported or local artisan rye crackers or toast. Can be served as a dip or as a standalone dish. For a sweeter tasting pate, you can add carrots and a little red wine to the onion reduction. You may also add tomato sauce for a meatloaf presentation effect. In this case, you can add ground beef. This can even be for breakfast. For a more therapeutic version, add a couple cups of frozen beef blood or pork blood from the Philippines found in Asian markets with three beaten eggs optional. Add this when you add the frozen chicken livers over the cooked potatoes and on onions, carrots, etc. Cover and let it cook like an omelet or scramble for cooking on the fly. Then run it through the food processor for a chocolate mousse looking aspect. Serve standalone in a large ramekin with the salad and a ramekin of stewed apples. On a trip to Norway, I was delighted to see how my friends ate liver pate on sourdough bread, fermented beets and onions, hard-boiled eggs, fish, fish eggs, and pickled herring for breakfast. This builds strength and stamina over time in the place of the modern sugar carbs feast that many people have for breakfast. Such a meal can be of great importance in, as a lifelong tradition. A more rustic breakfast seems to push away the dependence on sugar and open the palate to bitters and other more adult tastes. In America, for example, all this craze for street food and taco trucks probably stems from authentic vendors selling cow tongue, livers, innards, lungs, and other parts, animal parts, mixed into their tacos. These organs contain more vitamin combinations than the standard fare, and this practice ensures the proper and respectful consumption of all parts of the animal. Our old friend from paradise, the sacred palm tree. According to many anthropologists, the humanity's origin was near the equator. Whether this is true or not is debatable, but in this belt we find the coconut palm, faithful friend of man from paradisal times. Coconut and red palm have been harvested for millennia. These palm trees make 50 times more oil per acre than any other plant on earth. In addition, they give the oil with impressive ease. 
it is as if nature was saying, here is where I put the oil. However, the corn and peanut industry, peanut oil industry beginning its rise in the last century with such rapid growth viewed the palm trees as competition. Soon after, studies emerged showing that coconut oil, when strongly heated, oxidized, and refined, was harmful. This ultra-refined coconut oil was injected in high doses in laboratory rats. We can clearly see that the researchers had not tested the traditional virgin coconut oil. Do you see a pattern of behavior with these motivated researchers? Anytime someone shows you a scientific study, the first question should be who paid for it, and the second question should be who really paid for it as the bank rollers often hide behind great-sounding organization names. Did you know that in America, up until the Second World War, we used butter and coconut oil to make biscuits and cakes until the emergence of sunflower oil, canola oil, and soy oil, safflower oil, and margarine, which have since replaced them almost entirely? A few benefits of traditional saturated fats. Butter is divi deliciously divine, isn't it? Listen to your intuition. Experience shows that traditional fats contribute to a strong and fit body shape, especially butter and coconut oil. In general, fats do not solicit insulin production, and to be more exact, the more a fat is saturated, the less it solicits insulin production. Rather, it is the overeating of carbohydrates in our generation sweet tooth that makes us gain weight. There are other factors such as widespread intoxication, nutrient and mineral deficiencies, endocrine disruptors in the environment such as soy and plastics, and an overall lack of nutrient-dense and vitamin-rich foods. Our society consumes too many hidden sugars. Even an extra 5 grams per meal can make the difference between gaining and losing weight. The Greek statues are much closer to our ideal form than the emaciated models of fashion. I am sure we can find a happy modern medium between these perspectives. If we would like to avoid long-term constipation, a sufficient amount of saturated fat in the diet is necessary. Constipation slows down weight loss. Like a car without grease, movement is difficult. Olive oil cannot replace butter as it is devoid of cholesterol, choline, vitamin A, D, E, and iodine. Raw yellow butter is the best because pasteurization and thermization destroy the Wolzen factor, stigmasterol, which contributes to flexibility in the joints. However, as butter, unlike milk, can hold up to pasteurization better than any other milk product, it is healthy even if it has been pasteurized. Go for the best quality available. I love butter from Finland, Isigny, France, Germany, Latvia, Poland, Ireland, if soy-free, New Zealand, etc. Saturated fats are the transporters and protectors of the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. Consuming coconut oil can help you approach your ideal weight, 3 to 9 tablespoons per day with balanced meals that are low in carbohydrates. If you want to lose a few extra pounds, it works. Thousands of people have already tested this idea. The short-chain and medium-chain fatty acids have important antimicrobial properties, unlike the polyunsaturated omega-6 oils. Note, traditional cultures ate a ratio of 2 to 1, often 1 to 1 of omega-6 and omega-3 on average, which is 5 times more omega-3 than is suggested by erring nat naturopaths. Traditionally, sources of omega-6 were present in the food supply and were not added as oils. Saturated fats are abundant in traditional societies. These fats helped our ancestors to keep the small amount of omega-3 which they ingested or manufactured within the body Saturated fats act as insulation, holding our, in our warmth and retaining water to avoid dry skin. The short-chain fatty acids, SCFA, such as acid caprylic, goat, coconut, mismeristic, coconut, and butyric acid, butter, are active ingredients in antimicrobial treatments against fungi, such as candida albicans. The membranes of several viruses, fungi, and bacteria are destabilized by the molecular structure of these fatty acids. It destroys their membrane. The short-chain fatty acids are easily ab are absorbed directly through the body without soliciting the bile salts, free energy. The cells attacked by Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's will die when they are not in contact with ATP, a form of sugar at the cellular level. 
the, the ATP is consumed by the disease cells during their proliferation. However, studies have shown that brain cells, through the conversion of the ketone bodies found in coconut oil or palm oil, can manufacture energy in sufficient quantity without calling on ATP for energy production. This ensures the die-off of the anarchic cells and the proliferation is starved of resources. Lauric acid, contained in virgin coconut oil, becomes monolaurin, a powerful fatty acid that can destroy the cell membrane of invasive bacteria and viruses. Lauric acid is found naturally in breast milk. It helps us build strong immune systems. It should have been classified as an essential fatty acid, but the motion was voted down. Politics came into play here as well. The thyroid is balanced by coconut oil. Its thermal insulating properties contribute to thermogenesis in the body and an increase in basal metabolism. Coconut oil reduces cholesterol by converting it into prognonolon. In addition, the sale of traditional red palm oil and coconut oil helps small equatorial communities to survive, unlike the refined palm industry, which does the exact opposite. The story of Henry Charrier, the Papillon. In his autobiography, the author tells us how, floating on a bag full of coconuts, he escaped from prison on Devil's Island, French Guiana Penal Colony. The coconuts provided him with enough water, food, and protection from the sun to last three weeks at sea. True story. Freedom lies hidden within the coconut, as well as the roots of paradise. Rudolf Steiner Rudolf Steiner, intuitive scientist, philosopher, and lucid educator, might be able to shed some light on the subject of fats. In a lecture, Dr. Steiner stated that the heart does not pump the circulation as we think. It is rather the blood that acts as a pump through osmotic pressure. He also stated that the heart plays more of a regulating, listener role over the blood's pulsing. This theory has been brought back to the surface and well explained by Dr. Robert Cowan. I have only summarized it. According to this theory, the majority of the water we drink does not reach the cells to hydrate us as we think. The intercellular water is the result of the catabolism of the hydrogen contained in our foods and especially in fat. Saturated fats contain the most hydrogen. For example, 10 grams of saturated fat after chemical catabolism produces 10 grams of water from the hydrogen. Proteins produce only 4 grams of water and carbohydrates produce only 6 grams of water. The capillary cells take the oxygen and nutrients from the blood on one side, arterial, and give water and carbon dioxide on the other side, venous. In doing so, a decrease of osmotic pressure is observed, and according to Steiner, this negative pressure, or differential, is the source of our circulation. Therefore, a reduced saturated fat intake creates less intracellular water, lowers the pressure differential, and contributes to an inadequate circulation. Here's how Pandora's box of complications begins to open. The modern tendency to drink lots of water can aggravate our circulation by forcing the kidneys to filter constantly, demineralizing them. Our thirst, which leads us to drink so much water, is linked to our abuse of starches, carbohydrates, and our aversion to saturated fat. Starchy foods make you thirsty. We may also be drinking so much water to dilute toxins we are ingesting, from MSG being in so many foods, from refined sodium, or as a collective trend. In a seemingly logical yet childlike fashion, we see the heart as the center of circulation, but the body is actually much more subtle and discreet. The circulation engine is in fact more like an orchestra of capillaries. The mind alone cannot fully understand the mystery of the heart. In addition, the theory of Rudolf Steiner confirms the behavior of traditional cultures regarding their high, hydrogen-rich saturated fat intake and their vital need to obtain fat-soluble vitamins. Human beings have always sought after fat, and advertising agencies are quite aware of this. Watch any junk food commercial and you will see how it seduces us by playing on this fundamental urge. Sweets are less of a problem when the amount of fats is sufficient or if using unheated honey as a sweetener, but it becomes a real problem when sugar is taken without healthy fat. We accuse fat when we should be accusing sugar. The good fats protect us from the harmful effects of carbohydrates. 
Fats slow down the absorption of sugars and thus allow the reduction in frequency and intensity of insulin spiking. Many people insist that they don't eat much sugar. Here is a comparison. A thin slice of traditional slow-cooked rye black bread generously smeared with fat, tallow, duck fat, lard, butter, a bowl of simmering broth rich in gelatin and minerals, a soft-boiled egg, some bacon slices, and a few pickles with a glass of whole raw milk for breakfast, or today's version, a pop-tart, jelly and jam, plasticized sugary cereal, white flour pancakes, or even the microwave porridge with hardly any butter and a banana washed down with a cup of coffee and apple juice concentrate, or even compared to a pasta dish with a dab of olive oil. Worlds apart. We have come a long way from a clementine orange as a present at Christmas time or the occasional seasonal treat. One must be able to read sugars and carbs properly as they are 80% of the grocery store. In any case, if we eat less saturated fat, there is no choice but to compensate with carbohydrates and sugars. Here is one of the keys to defeating the demon behind many compulsive eating disorders. Sugar's faded nemesis revealed at last, fat. Sugar and carbohydrates should not be underestimated because, culturally speaking, we have never eaten such quantities until modern times and the effects are profound. Sugar can bring down an entire nation. The goal is not a war against sugar, but an understanding and right-sizing of this danger which has taken up too much space. There is a link already well established between our behavior and our food, between school problems and junk food, between lack of concentration and sugar. Why all this hyperactivity and lack of effort in urban teenagers? Is urban youth violence really gratuitous? Does it spring from nowhere? May nutrition be a determining factor? Imagine if modern science and, it, and the industry admitted their mistakes regarding saturated fats and human needs. And add to that the admission of how soy-based fats and proteins weaken the body's upbuilding capacity. The whole consumer structure would take a dive, because it is based on the desire to lose weight, the myths of cholesterol, the myths of the cardiovascular and metabolo metabolic diseases, and the drug sales associated with this lack of understanding of human nutrition. It is easy to see, with everything at stake, why these things have not been allowed to emerge to the surface. Time to grab your shovel. Quote, in times of widespread fraud, the mere act of speaking the truth is a revolutionary act.